Hey there, so I just got in this Ace Magician mini PC. Now this mini PC I've seen on Amazon floating around for a little while now, and it, I decided to pick it up because it is very interesting. It is the cheapest system you can get right now with a Ryzen 5 5600U. Here you can see we have some very basic packaging and really not much branding whatsoever on anything. Overall, it's a decent enough packaging, but nothing fancy whatsoever. But actually pulling the system out and taking a look at it i was actually surprised the build quality of the system itself isn't exactly great it's made out of some very noticeably cheap feeling plastic it's certainly decent enough it's gonna hold the components inside perfectly fine but it definitely doesn't feel like a premium system whatsoever besides the 5600u inside of it one of the other interesting aspects of it is actually the io since we actually get two ethernet ports now this isn't 2.5 gigabit ethernet which is a little disappointing to see but still dual gigabit ethernet ports does mean that we get some interesting functionality here since we now can actually use this as a server that we could use for a potential router now the configuration that you do see here does come with 16 gigabytes of ram set at 3200 megahertz we do have a 512 gigabyte ssd installed then you do actually have the expandability to be able to install a 2.5 inch drive and I'll show you right now how to do that. Getting into the system itself is actually really simple. You really just have to unscrew the feet at the bottom. Thankfully, the rubber on them is actually just attached onto the screws itself. It's nothing that's glued on, so you're not actually damaging anything long term. Once you remove those, you're able to just pry off the panel extremely easily. And you actually have really easy access to the RAM and the SSD. So the bottom panel actually has some plastic clips that you can slide an SSD onto. And in the box, you do actually get a SATA ribbon adapter that you need to install on this little thing right here. You simply lift up the lid. Once you do that, you simply insert it on there and you're good to go. It is a toolless install for the SSD, so there's nothing that you need to screw on or anything. Now the most interesting aspect of this mini PC is the hardware that it has in there. The Ryzen 5 5600U is extremely interesting for the price point that we're looking here because its biggest competition right now is the B-Link systems. Right off the bat, I will say that it is not built as well as the B-Link system. It is definitely much cheaper plastic and definitely doesn't feel as solid and it actually, even though it's bigger, weighs less than the system itself because the materials are just just so much cheaper that said though there is nothing on the market right now that fully one-to-one -one competes with this piece of hardware b-link for example has multiple generations of hardware currently available on the market that are all around the same price but none of them really match this in terms of spec and in terms of price but let's actually take a look at how it performs and especially in comparison to some of the other systems around its price range and the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is cinebench r23 now the system by default actually comes with a TDP of 15 watts. You can go into the BIOS and adjust it and set it all the way up to 25 watts if you would like. You can even go all the way up to 54, but when I tried that configuration, it actually didn't let me do it. And you'll see very quickly why it actually doesn't matter if you can go past 25. With the stock 15 watt TDP, I actually ended up getting a multi core score of 7091. Now for comparison, at the stock 15 watt TDP, a Ryzen 5 5500U gives a Cinebench score of 5313. So there is a noticeable uplift going on here already at just the stock setting, but things get really interesting once we turn things up to the 25 watt TDP. Once I let the system run with a full 25 watts, we actually got an impressive score on Cinebench with our multi-core score being 8716. What makes this extremely impressive is that this actually managed to beat out the B-Link SER5 with both the 5560U and the 5600H in them by a pretty noticeable margin. And this was a consistent, repeatable result. This puts the multi-core score just within arm's reach of the 6600H. Now, this isn't too surprising since the 6600H is pretty much based off 
off of the exact same Zen 3 architecture as the 5600U, just on a slightly more refined node with a slight clock speed bump. So it makes sense that with more TDP, this is going to be able to close the gap pretty significantly. But th this does impress me in that it actually beat out the B-Link SCR5 mini PC in terms of the overall result. But let's take a look at some gaming performance. So here we have Rainbow Six Siege running with the built-in benchmark. We are running this with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we do have FSR set to the performance preset. We're trying to maximize the FPS here. You can see side by side what the results are like. This is at 15 watts and 25 watts and you can see that the 25 watt TDP actually is not really giving us any improvement whatsoever here. We see such a minor improvement in terms of average that it can pretty much be just chalked up to margin of error and for the most part you're really not going to notice a difference between the two here. So at least in Rainbow Six Siege it doesn't really seem to matter which setting you go with and overall both are giving us a fantastic level of performance in a game like this. Now taking a look at Batman Arkham Knight you can see her running with the lowest in-game graphics graphics settings at 1080p, the result that we get at both configurations is identical, neither one really giving us a great result. You're really going to have to start to drop the resolution if you want this to be a playable experience, but it doesn't seem like adjusting the TDP will do anything to improve our results here. And you can see it really just comes down to being completely bottlenecked by the GPU itself, and it doesn't really benefit from that extra power. Now taking a look at Horizon Zero Dawn running at the lowest in-game graphic settings again with FSR set to the performance preset. We're seeing a very noticeable pattern here where there is pretty much no difference whatsoever between going with the 15 watts and going with 25 watts. The biggest difference really being is just the noticeably higher temperatures. Overall though we are getting a pretty decent result in terms of the average and the 1% lows are passable enough but visually speaking we do have to sacrifice a lot to get here. Next up, I tried the Civilization Turn Test, and really the result that I got was not impressive for either configuration. Nine seconds per turn is pretty brutal, especially as we're going into the late game. So not a fantastic result, but really it's still going to be more than playable on here. It really just comes down to how much you value your time here. So for the most part, it is an okay result, but nothing impressive. Now jumping on in and taking a look at Hitman World of Assassination, we can see see here with the built-in benchmark. Again, no noticeable improvement at all going with 25 watts. And really, this at this point should become very apparent that there is not going to be a noticeable gain in pretty much any game because of the fact that the GPU is able to get more than enough power than it really needs. These Zen 3 cores are extremely efficient. They really don't need that much power. You can see that in the situations where we don't really need a lot of CPU, we're not really using a lot of power because it's not really necessary. The difference right here between the two is just two to three watts. AMD really made some fantastic efficiency gains going with Zen 3. And so at these lower TDPs, you really just don't need that much more in terms of wattage when you're not really fully utilizing the CPU. And we'll take a look at one final game to really exemplify the point that I'm trying to make here, that there is no gains to be had really going from 15 watts to 25 watts, at least when it comes to gaming. As you saw with Cinebench, there were some major gains to be had in terms of CPU performance, but if you're doing a task where you're not really going to be utilizing the full capability of the CPU at 100% load, there really is just no reason to raise the TDP. Now this is interesting because the system itself actually is horrifically loud at the 25 watt TDP. The chassis itself really does not seem to be designed for anything more than just the 15 watt stock that it is configured for. So now the question becomes, where does this stack up compared to everything else available on the market right now? At the price point that I got this, just a little under $300. It is extremely competitive. At that price point, its main competitors are really all the different variations of the SRE5. Now, nothing quite matches it in terms of spec for the price though, since B-Link really at this price point has either the 5560U, which is Zen 3, but only has a Radeon 
Xeon 6 iGPU, or they have the 5500U that is with Zen 2, but we do get the Radeon 7 in that. So if you plan on running this stock, it's actually pretty competitive. Really, my biggest disappointment is that this chassis itself just cannot seem to handle 25 watts. Once I set the system to 25 watts, when we were doing Cinebench, the TDP was just at 25 watts and we were already reaching almost 100 degrees Celsius. And the system was absolutely screaming. Even though it is a bigger chassis than any of the B-Link systems, it actually has noticeably worse cooling. But once you do use the 25 watt TDP, the performance, at least CPU wise, is almost there in comparison to the 6600H, which normally you are looking at spending almost double the cost to get. But of course, its best configuration is to just use it at the stock 15 watt TDP. At least if you're going to be gaming, you're really not going to be seeing much of an uplift at all. So I'm actually kind of surprised. I genuinely was not expecting to like this system as much as I did. I wish that the material it was made out of was slightly better. But in terms of the overall performance that you actually get, it's pretty impressive, especially for the dollar. For the price point, you pretty much get the dual LAN. You get a really powerful CPU that is also extremely efficient. And as long as you don't raise the TDP on it, the system actually is extremely quiet. Just know that if you do plan on raising that TDP, it is going to become unbearably loud. But overall, the results that I got out of this were actually pretty impressive. So it's definitely worth giving a consideration and maybe it'll even make you look past the cheaper construction of the overall chassis. But we'll do a comprehensive comparison between this and the other mini PCs later on. But if you're interested in this mini PC, please be sure to check out the Amazon affiliate link down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.